Ecclesiastes chapter 4, look at verse 9. 4 9. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Have you ever heard the quote, it takes a village to raise a child? It's our primary role and responsibility as parents, but it sure helps when other people are involved in the care and raising of them to help them grow in Jesus. Gosh, could every kid use more support? Could every kid use more encouragement and love in their life? I know adults sure can. And it's probably, I'm sure, it's much more for children, for their development in our incredibly harsh and difficult world. More studies are finding out now that the pandemic has also left children without the usual mentors that they have, because people are staying away, without the the usual mentorship support uh, and other supports that they receive from their communities, family, and educators. And so what I want to encourage and challenge everybody to do is not only shepherd and lead your family well, help them grow towards Jesus. Whether you have kids in the home or not, you probably have some nieces and nephews and cousins and brothers and sisters. And There's kids around you. There's neighborhood kids. There's church kids. And uh, we, I want to tell you about a new program that we're starting. Do you know what we're calling it, Chris? Did, you, did we figure out a name? Something along the lines of adopt a youth or adopt a kid. Now, some of you may want other people to adopt your kids sometimes, depending on their behavior. But it's not like that. Um, <laughs> oh, Eli, oh man, you got excited. <laughs> Just some days, right? So what we're doing is, and we don't have that today, do we? Okay. Next week, or maybe you can just email us the information, whatever, troyview at gmail.com. But, well, we're going to have a sheet, a sign-up form next Sunday. And it'll either be in the bulletin or on the Welcome Center. And what it is, is, do you want to explain a little bit, Chris? Did you, you worked out some of the details. I just, um, we have done this before in the past, um, where an adult would adopt a child um, and you'll get a little card with information about them, their birth date, different things like that. Um, And just to encourage them throughout the year. Um, And we'll do this for a whole year. We'll see how well it goes and then we'll switch it up. But um, if you want to take them to lunch or do something nice for them, that's great. But it's, I mean, it's mainly for encouragement um, throughout their school year. And then in turn, we're gonna get the kids to do that back to the person who's encouraging them as well. Thanks, Chris, for heading that up. It's easy for me to say, encourage one another until the day Jesus comes back. That's what the Bible says. Encourage and build each other up. And then we go from here and we kind of get busy and we kind of forget. Sometimes, some days are better at it than others. But what this does, it, you get a name, you get a number, address, And this is your little buddy. And for the next year, celebrate their birthday with them. Ask them how school's going. You know, can we all spare 30 minutes a week on really important things? Maybe an hour or two? I think the most important things in life, um, they deserve our time. And so it's not like eight hours a day you're going to be spending with this person. But we'll have some ideas out there that we'll throw out. Text them. Hope you have a good day at school. Or if they get it, you know, some A's, take them out for ice cream at Duckies or whatever. Ask how they're doing. Ask them what their challenges are. Ask them what struggles they're facing. See how you can encourage them. Send, text them a Bible verse, you know, some days when they're having a hard time or whatever their situation is. Say, I'm praying for you and pray for them. Pray for them specifically. Just a way to make sure that we don't let any little children 
and fall through the cracks. Parents, our job to lead and, and, and guide and love well, shepherd well. But we all need some help. And it's good for kids to have the outside support from other adults, other loving Christian adults in their church family to encourage them and support them too. To have the outside support means a whole lot to kids. I know it did for me growing up. So we're going to have that for you. Uh, we'll, you'll hear more about it on the church email this week. Let me know if you're not on the church email. I can put your email address on there and you can get more information about it. And we're going to have a sign up next week and sign up people with their little buddy. I don't know what we're going to call it. If there's some, if we want to call them little lambs or sheep, that might not be very nice in some contexts. Sheeple, no, probably not. Um, I just, I want us to have the heart of Jesus with kids. Do you know what Jesus said in Matthew? He said, let the little children come to me. Don't stop them. Love that. They're like, oh, Jesus, sorry you're being bothered by these kids. Scram. Get out of here. Quit bothering Jesus. And he's like, no. Stop it. Come here. Come sit on my lap. I want to tell you a story. That's Jesus. He has a heart for children. In fact, he says that our hearts need to be like children to enter the kingdom of God. But he needs to have that trust and belief in God like a little child sometimes. Do you see kids in your life even your own kids sometimes, and you're like, "Get away from me! Stop bothering me! Get off! Get off my lake! You know, <laughs> leave me alone. Go, go watch TV. Go do something. I'm busy." Or do you say, "Let the little children come to me"? And now, Rachel can probably attest, letting the children come to you 24/7 does get a little exhausting <laughs> in the Kane home school. So I, I, we switch off sometimes. I give her a few hours off, right? Well, I take the kids out for ice cream or something. Kids need your love, your support, your encouragement to lead them and guide them in life and towards Jesus. And other kids who are not your kids also need your support and your encouragement and your love in their life. So let's make that happen, Troy. Have you? We'll call it No Child Left Behind. Wait, was that something else? <laughs> a while back. <laughs> but it's not what we're going to call it. But we are going to make plans and do diligence and purposeful and um, deliberately see to it this year that every kid, and if you have some kids that you know that don't make it to Troy View very often, but they want to be a part of this as well, let's get them involved and get their information to Chris. <coughs> and I think a year from now as the kids, as we're all hopefully coming out of this COVID-19 business, getting ready for COVID-2022 20, or 21 or whatever's next, the world will continue to be crazy, but we can continue to love kids with a crazy love going to the extremes to show them how valuable and worthwhile they are not only to us, but also to Jesus. Amen? Let's do that. I look around and see my wonderful life Almost perfect from the outside In picture frames I see my beautiful wife Always smiling, but on the inside Oh, I can hear her saying